Everybody wants to be like DJI, especially when it comes to making drones. After all, they are the biggest drone manufacturer on the world. Just look at the DJI Avata. It's not that special, yet it sells in plenty. It's not a surprise then that other companies want to jump the hype wagon and sell easy to use drones in the very similar form factor. A few months ago, I got my hands on the iFlight Defender 25, a clearly inspired by the DJI. DJI Avata ready to use bind and flies two and a half cine whoop from the iFlight. And if I say that it was clearly inspired by the Avata, I do mean it. For good and the bad. Let's begin with the good things. Overall, the construction of the Defender 25 is more than solid. Good plastic, good layout, good molds, it looks like a quality product. And the fact that there are no antennas anywhere inside does help to keep the good looks. And it even has some landing legs, which helps when operating the Defender 25 anywhere besides the flat ground. For example, on the even shortest ever grass. FPV is provided by the DJI Air Unit 03, which is when ventilated, and the camera is soft mount. Mounted. Gyro flow works with this one, no problem. There is an access hole to access the USB connector as well as the SD card slot. And what's interesting, the O3 antennas are nowhere inside. Everything is hidden inside of the frame, nothing sticks out. The flight controller is the custom iFlight board, the Blitz F722 X1, which by default is flashed with the Betaflight. Of course, there is also a target for the iNav 7.1, unofficial so you can easily extend the capabilities of the Defender 25. Radiolink, of course, Express LRS 2.4 GHz. This is absolute standard in the 2024. Anybody still make drones with the free Skylink? I don't think so. What's interesting, the Defender 25 comes with the GPS, even though on the outside nothing hints that. No mass, no externally mounted antenna, nothing. The GPS, just like the FPV and the RX antennas, are well hidden inside of the frame. Well, you know, plastic doesn't really block the RF radiation that much, so if the plastic is not too thick, and in this case it isn't, it's not really a big deal. Of course, because it comes with the Betaflight flashed, the GPS capabilities are really limited to what Betaflight offers. So basically you get only return to home, aka the GPS rescue. No position hold, no waypoints, just the basic rescue stuff. If you flash it with iNav 7, you get the full package. You don't need magnetometer, iNav 7.1 does not require magnetometer anymore, so everything, including position hold and cruise mode, will work perfectly fine. It of course comes tunes from the start, and if you ask me, it flies exactly what you expect from the well tuned CineWoop. It's slow, it's majestic, it's loud when it flies, but it is a stable FPV platform if you want to explore well the not so easily available spaces or you are just learning to fly. After all, you rather won't be doing any flips, rolls and power loops with this thing. It's just not designed for the treatment like that. And protected propellers mean that if you hit into something, there is a pretty good chance you will be able to just continue the flight. And the fact that the DJI Air Unit 03 is probably the best quality you can get does not really limit the cinematic capabilities of this drone. Just fly, record, stabilize, color grade and you should be happy. No assembly, no setup, no mambo jumbo required. Just take it out of the box, charge the battery, plug it in, bind the goggles, bind the Express LRS radio and you are ready to fly. But here comes a few problems with the concept. And the problem number one, probably the biggest one, are the batteries. Unfortunately, iFlight decided to use custom, made only for the Defender batteries that fit nothing else. You get one battery and the charger in the box, but if you want to fly longer, then 
well, you have to buy batteries from iFlight. Of course, luckily, if you own a 3D printer, you can print yourself an adapter that will fit any 4S battery, of course, as the size is okay. But well, it's not really beginner user friendly, isn't it? Additionally, the original batteries are surprisingly light. They wait for the 550 milliamp hours and the plastic casing, of course, only 70 grams. If you look what open branded batteries in this weight range offer, you will quickly discover that, well, you are losing approximately 100 milliamp hours only for the special plastic case. 70 grams is usually around 650 milliamp hours on the 4S. The second problem comes from the fact that although the Defender 25 is clearly targeted on the beginner pilots, it does not really offer much in terms of assisting beginner pilot in having a nice and pleasurable experience. If you already have the GPS and this is a Cinewoop designed for beginners, bind and fly, why doesn't offer the position hold out of the box? I'm pretty sure inexperienced pilots would appreciate the possibility of just parking the drone in the air. Yes, you can for example flash INA or replace the flight controller and flash it with Ardu Pilot, but then it's just the extra hassle. So why not do it from the start? In general, it's quite interesting design for the people who are just beginning their FPV adventure or want to explore tight spaces and do not want to build anything by themselves. Everything you need besides the radio and the FPV goggles comes in the box, you can buy additional batteries. Yes, they are overpriced, not compatible with anything else, but you can just buy them and enjoy the FPV. And if you really want to, you can almost easily unblock additional capabilities coming from the fact this thing has GPS and this thing can be flashed enough. If only the batteries were more open and universal, not those special ones made by iFlight. And here's the next video you should watch.